I'm Sir Tap Tap, and I'm doing some little tutorials for Food Fantasy here. So, what do you do with cooking talents? What what are these things? Um, first of all, cooking talents unlock pretty early in the story, and you go to this talents menu. Uh, a lot of people get confused by seeing the cooking talents. Like they, not many things give you cooking talents. You might go to a level, go to a level and see this like, oh, you get 600 cooking talents because the guy has the chef hat. This is actually player level points. Um, th this game kind of has a problem where a lot of things are named the same as other things or look the same as other things. Um, cooking power is exclusively distributed via um, icons that look like this. This is cooking power. So you get 200 cooking power, which lets you unlock cooking talents. I don't know why they just don't, don't call them like, you know, talent points. Oh, they call them cooking points here. You see, they, they call everything different names, and it makes everything much more confusing than it should be. Um, so there's three different kinds of cooking talents. There's damage, there's support, which has your healing and defensive things, and control, which kind of is just a catch-all buffs and debuffs kind of thing. An interesting facet of how the talents work is that once you level up something, um, the cost continues to rise, um, kind of exponentially, actually. So, like, your very first upgrade is gonna cost, like, 10 cooking points, and eventually it costs me up to 2,000 each year, and if I got another one, it would cost, like, 3,500 or 4,000, and eventually we went all the way up to 12,000 here. Um, I really am scared to, to see if, what the final cost of everything is. Um, but what that really means is that you kind of want to spread the love. You kind of want to get a little bit of everything. Uh, you do want to be very careful about where you spend your points. Um, you can reset your points, but it costs you some points. So unless you spent a very large amount of points on a skill that you totally will never use, um, it's not really worth it. And also, there's these very special passive abilities that you get that constantly buff your characters. And you can only get these by absolutely maxing every single space on the entire board. So, personally, I would just bite the bullet and if you've made a little bit of a poor choice, just stop investing in the poor thing, but don't reset. It, resetting just seems like a waste. Even though the price continues, you're gonna eventually need to buy everything. So, it's like, I do think it will probably take months, like, this game is a very slow game overall. It's kind of like MMO-like, and you're gonna need to play for months to really max out everything. But, um, so what's a good skill? The first skill that you want is Blade Chop. So, first you want to get Straight Cut, which, uh, just does high damage to the enemy with the highest attack, which is basically your boss killer is what this is. Then as we go along, we upgrade the skill. And the important one is decapitation here. When the enemy's health is below 15%, it's a one-hit KO. I mean, not really one hit, but you know what I mean. Um, then you want to upgrade to Blade Chop, which also, it just basically makes it stronger and does more damage. Um, the the one-hit KO is the really important thing, because that, that helps you kill chests. Uh, everybody hates the treasure chest levels, and um, this basically means that if the if the treasure chest has 15% of health left, at the very last second you cast Blade Chop, chest is dead, you win. Um, grilled Purgatory, your other options here are Super Dark Cuisine and Grilled Purgatory. I'm not really sure which is better for each. I personally wish I went for Super Dark Cuisine. Um, Grilled Purgatory is not exactly bad. It does 10% of the current health of the bosses, of the enemies. Of all enemies, plus an extra 1% per second for 5 seconds, so... The problem with that is once the enemy is already really low on health, it doesn't really do much extra damage. Which kind of combos into Blade Chop, because, you know, once you're low enough, you can do a 1-hit KO. But, I personally think Super Dark Cuisine against a specific target is very, is would be more effective. It also lowers defense. So when you're looking at which skills to upgrade, one thing you should do is look at what the extra things do. Because, like, this unlocks Dark Cuisine, right, which is your poison skill, does percentage of damage. Um, but these nodes here add extra effects, increased toxicity, extra length, weakened defense, you know, this adds to that initial ability. So before you buy something, you want to see eventually what it will become. And as you go along the path, you unlock Super Dark Cuisine, which is, you know, the ultimate version of it. Um... So yeah, I would suggest first thing you want to do probably is go straight to that blade chop, especially very early on. Having blade chop early can really help because 
Uh, 1,010 damage early on is pretty dang great. So after you get Blade Chop, I would say get some support abilities. This seasoning is kind of like it regains 45% uh, of the lowest health unit, and that can be very helpful for certain missions where you can't bring a healer. Um, just a very important bit of targeted health. Melt and Mold is very important for the uh, Catacombs. It revives up to three friendly units and uh, heals their health 40%. It's kind of a risky one. It's not something that you want to use, but in the Catacombs, the things just get so crazy. Uh, Divine Seasoning is probably the best individual healing skill. All friendly units regain 50% of their health and lose all status ailments. So certain bosses inflict you with confused. Um, Inugami, in particular, I always lose to Inugami because I don't have uh, because of confusion. But if you have this, you can remove the confusion. Uh, so it's very nice. Uh, the alternate thing, there's only real two main branches on the support tab. Uh, there's also the keep fresh, which basically just makes you invincible very briefly. Very briefly, and I'm kind of reluctant to go along this path because, like, it's going to cost an insane amount by the time I actually get to zero degrees. And until it's maxed, the keep the the invincibility ones are very bad. Um, Fruit Soul to lowest HP has a 30% chance of becoming invincible for one second, one second, and you basically have to max. Um, you basically have to max this passive here that buffs this. You have to max this, and then get this one to get a 100% chance of becoming invincible. Being invincible, obviously, is good, but there's there's better ways to do it. Um, the main thing that's kind of good for is if a boss is about to fire off a nuke at you, you can, you know, survive it with that. But, then we look at the control tab, and this is probably your, your nicest use of, like, 10 cooking power. Saucepan. If you buy just one level of this, it stuns the enemy with a heist attack for one second. Doesn't sound very good, right? But the thing is, say you fail and interrupt on a boss, and the boss is about to hit you with a, a full party nuke that would just completely obliterate your party. You cast Saucepan right before they attack, uh, basically immediately after that fancy animation where they're, you know, oh no, I'm gonna kill your party. And you cast this, boom, cancels their ultimate. Uh, so that's why I haven't bothered to upgrade. You can also get it to where it stuns uh, the whole party for a very brief period. I, I guess it, it would be nice to cancel like multiple bosses things, but the first level is really the most interesting one on that one. There's also these passives that you can like immediately get and should immediately get um, in each thing, which I think you might even have to buy to unlock the other stuff. But yeah, unfortunately, um, the control board does not have like a final passive. So like in damage, there's these extra passives that increase the damage and attack speed, but you have to fill the whole board to do that. Support has ones for defense and healing ability, but you have to fill the whole board. Control, uh, there is no extra item that, there's no extra passive that you get for filling the whole board. So if you were to neglect any one thing, it would be the control board. Like I said though, the costs increase per set. So eventually support or control is going to be so cheap that it's just like, why not? Um, I I'm not completely confident as to say what the absolute best skills are, but at the moment, I think everybody agrees that Blade Chop is probably the single best skill. I would say Super Dark Cuisine is probably the most useful, um, second most useful skill in this branch, just because it could really help against treasure chests, and a lot of people find treasure chests very annoying. I don't find Crosscut very useful. It does three dam 600 damage to the three farthest enemy units. Uh, very helpful early on, but later on, it's just you get better skills and 600 damage isn't as big a deal. Um, in the support tier, I think Divine Seasoning, Regular Seasoning are pretty definitely the best ones. Melt and Mold also very good. Zero Degrees is not terrible, but I definitely can't say it's worth trying to go for first. So I think support is pretty easy to deal with. Control is the one where I'm like, huh, I'm not really sure what's best. I would definitely get one level in saucepan. Magic mushroom doesn't seem very good to me. Uh, it costs, you have to go through this whole upgrade tree in order to get a 100% chance of charming a random enemy for five seconds. Doesn't really seem that great. And again, the titanium pan stun all enemies for like a second. 
two seconds max, I think. Um, and then you can remove enemies' status buffs with this powerful cleansing and clean and scrub. The problem is, I don't ever recall actually losing a battle because of enemies' buffs. And if I did, it was in something where I can't dispel buffs. It was like, you know, in the showdown, we can't use that. Uh, in the story, at least thus far, I have never encountered a situation where that would be truly, really useful. Uh, so instead, with the control thing, what I did was I went for these buffs where, like, you can up your team's defense by 200%, which is pretty nice. Uh, up your team damage by 40%. I tend to use this with uh, chests. And restore energy, which um, you can get up to 50% of your energy gauge just from casting that skill once. So you can kind of do lots of full party nukes or whatever your party has set up for your energy skill or linked skills. So I think that one's pretty legit and I've been working towards that one. Uh, so that's an overview of the cooking talents. And if you make a mistake, you can reset, but look how much points. You lose one-fourth of the points you've already invested. And that's, that's rough. That's, that's real rough. Um, you can consume an insane amount, like the amount of crystals that it costs rises as the amount, uh, the amount of points goes up. So I really, not, I really can't recommend resetting, just kind of grin and bear it. So hopefully that helps you decide. I, like I said, we're not 100% we're sure what the absolute best is, but I would say, you know, Blade Chop, then Super Dark Cuisine, um, Divine Seasoning, then Melt and Mold. Uh, definitely Saucepan. Very easy to go for Saucepan. Um, then I would say go up the buff tier here to get all of those. So, that's how you do the talents. So I'm making a whole series of these tutorial videos, so subscribe if you want to see more, or check out the playlist that should be at the end of this video coming up right a second here.